ones are tires that you see here. On the high end. This is a big boy airplane, isn't it? Look at this. Look at the tires on this thing. Big, fat tires. You could probably land this on boulders and it would be okay, but certainly on a gravelly creek bed or pretty much any place you like, I suspect. What's this airplane called? Well, this is the Just Aircraft, um, and it's the Highlander model. Now, this company's been around a while. They did a little two, a single seat ultralight some time ago, um, and that was a fun airplane to fly. I had the pleasure to fly. Now, what type of construction you use in it? This is a uh, welded steel, uh, a primary construction, all covered with fabric, uh, wings, uh, fuselage, and, and everything. And, uh, and that helps keep the, the weight down on it some, and uh, it allows them to uh, custom paint it in various ways that you can't do on, for example, some other airplanes that we see out here. And I understand this also has a folding wing on it. Yes, it does, Dave. Uh, this is another one that derives from that uh, original design by uh, uh, from the Avid Flyer folks, uh, Dean Wilson, many years ago, and they've evolved the airplane quite a bit over time. But right above my head here, right above this door frame, you can see a pin that comes out. When you do, the wing is just going to swing back, both sides of course, and you can park it in a hangar with a lot less space taken up, or perhaps use a trailer if that's what works for you. And this must be really enticing to those bush plane pilots that are looking for this type of airplane. Well, you sure got to think so, especially with these tires on it. I love these things. They do take a little bit of technique because they've got quite a bit of air movement to them that will absorb a lot of bounce, uh, as, as the case may be, but they do take a little bit of practice to learn how to use them. They are available with a more conventional looking tire as well, but if you want to land out in some rough conditions, this airplane is going to make it work for you. And again, this looks like a very rugged airplane when you look at it uh, inside. Well, yeah, this, this is a, an airplane for an outdoorsman kind of thing. You could... Now, this particular one has some big fat cushions in it, but a lot of times they have a little thinner cushion. And then what they do is they just take this uh, this cushion out, and you can lay this down, and if this was a thinner cushion, it would make an almost flat surface back here. So a little bit of foam in there, and you could spend the night in this airplane pretty easily. But when you're back in it, and you're getting ready to go flying, the seats adjust pretty easily, so you could do it in flight. A little pin here in front of you. And look at all that range here. I mean, you could be a pretty long fella and still fit in here, or be a pretty short fella and still fit in here. And it looks like you have lots of headroom going up to the ceiling, too. Yeah, a lot of plenty of clearance in here. I'm not uh, I'm not sitting in the seat right now, but uh, it looks like there'd be plenty up there. There's a lot of room back in here. They've got quite a bit of gear back in here now. Still got lots of room for more. And due to the construction of uh, uh, welded steel, you got places you could tie cargo down to make sure it stays put while you're flying. And it looks like a great visibility out of it as well. Pretty much see everywhere in this airplane. Uh, the skylight overhead, and you notice it's a big broad cockpit too, so you got a lot of room and the doors bow out like they often do on these kind of designs. So you got a lot of room in here, a lot of comfort for an occupant or two. And uh, you could be uh, probably two big guys and fit in this airplane very well. And I understand you can also open and close the doors in flight. Yeah, they tell us at any speed you can pop these doors open, which uh, for an old ultralight pilot like myself, sounds like a lot of fun to me. And also, you can put this airplane on floats too, of course, if you choose to do that. And if you did, now you've got access out both sides and you can have the door open when you come in and land, be ready to do what you need to do. And control system, what type of controls are they using on it? Well, this one's a little different than uh, some of the other ones that look sort of like this design. It's got uh, joysticks on both sides, and if you can see over my shoulder here, it's moving the ailerons, but they're discrete ailerons, so you've got separate flaps, which is a handle right here in the center of the aircraft with a detent button, and then uh, just move the flaps up to the positions you want them. They click firmly into place, as you can probably hear. And they again you... look like barn door flaps. They must really slow this airplane down. Well, they tell us that, that this particular one will stall at about 24 miles an hour, but the, uh, the number they normally put out is 27. Either number is mighty low. So you could get this airplane in and out of a 200-foot strip, they say. Okay. Now, what kind of power are we using on this? This one uses the Rotax 912 100 horsepower engine in it. And uh, combined with a high lift airfoil, you can see the uh, curvature to the lower side of the surface here. It's got what's called under camber, meaning that it's going to work really well at low speeds, and that's what gives that low speed uh, stall to it. But it's also what allows it to fly off of a very unimproved strip with these giant tires, but also a very short one, even with conventional tires. And what kind of cruise speed and, and that type of thing would you have on? Well, this is not going to be one of your faster airplanes, but it'll cruise all day long at about 100 miles an hour. 
I saw it climbing out here the other day, and I mean, it was a homesick angel when it left the ground. Just really shoots up in the air. Doesn't surprise me for a bit. Again, the shape of that wing, the construction of it, and uh, what this airplane was designed for in the first place would be that kind of get up and out of a short strip. Maybe when you're out fishing or hunting or doing something with your airplane, this airplane is going to get you out of wherever you got into pretty easily. And where's the fuel located in? Fuel's located in the wings here, and there's an interesting thing. I don't know if your camera will show it too well, but if you look over my head here, into the wing root, there's a piece of fiberglass up here that is somewhat clear. And they said, you know, if you kind of shake the wings, I don't know if that's showing or not. It may not, because it looks a little dark in there. But I can see, as I look back over you, the same features on that side, I can see very easily how much fuel there is in that wing. No problem whatsoever. So the human eye can sometimes do what the camera may not be showing us. In this airplane here, you see they've equipped it with the uh, Stratomaster from MGL Avionics. That's a South African brand. It has one of the nicer displays that I've seen, but one of the things I particularly like about it is instead of having a whole row of black buttons that you don't know what they're for, these are all nicely identified and it's black on white so you can see it in a low light condition. Uh, of course, they use the GPS uh, 295 uh, in this particular airplane and they probably have a number of other choices they can offer to you. Uh, center mounted throttle with a friction lock on it, so pretty easy for both occupants to uh, uh, control the airplane very nicely. So if they want to get more information on this, Dan, where do we go? Well, you go to justaircraft.com. That's J-U-S-T aircraft. It's justanaircraft.com. And do you have a flight report on this one, Dan? I do not have a flight report on the Highlander, but some of their earlier models I do, and many of the characteristics will be similar, and you can find that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.